get it. It's lit. lit. Just take a look at the drip. drip. You boys don't get fired in this. Roll a dope, yeah. I, I, I think, I think you're going to find that most vegans, as a matter of fact, all of the vegans that I have come across, don't uh, will agree that breeding animals is not a ethical um, treatment of them, right? So if you're getting animals from a breeder, I don't know if that would qualify as abuse, but I think it would definitely qualify as exploitation, right? Because you're exploiting the animal for your own gain. And in the case of, like, dogs and cats, if we're talking about breeders for them, there's another consideration to make, and that is that there's so many dogs and cats that don't have homes that need homes that every time you're purchasing from a breeder, there's actually dogs and cats that are getting euthanized that never got a home, right? And so for every uh, dog or cat that you purchase from a breeder, you're basically uh, committing another dog to have to be euthanized because it couldn't find a home. And so... That's why you'll hear the phrase adopt uh, instead of shop, right? Or adopt, don't shop. And that's basically what that's all about, right? So if you adopt an animal that needs a home but doesn't have one, well, you haven't stolen an animal from their family. As a matter of fact, you've taken them when they had no family and given them a family. And so, you know, that I think could definitely be an, uh, an ethical thing to do. Another ethical way to take care of an animal would be to rescue an animal from, um, from a dangerous situation, right? So a lot of uh, a lot of times you'll get vegan activists who will rescue like pigs or cows or chickens or sheep from these farms and then they will take care of them, right? So these are different ways that we could take care of animals in an ethical manner. But I agree that purchasing animals from a breeder would be an unethical choice. Okay, if it's an ethical choice and adopting animals from shelters and stuff is ethical, why isn't it illegal to for breed, breeders to breed animals? Why isn't it illegal yet? Yeah. That would be by virtue of the fact that animals are considered commodities by most people, right? And so because of that, their industry is allowed to flourish, even if it's an industry of breeding animals into existence. Our society on the whole doesn't value animal rights as much as they should, and that's one of the reasons that veganism is trying so hard to uh, get the message of animal rights out there because there's a lot of victims that we're just ignoring and that we're continuing to allow to be uh, to be harmed, to be tortured, to be murdered. And, you know, we don't have to do that. We can change our actions and we can actually show compassion towards animals. Yeah, and, like, I'm not against adopting. I've actually, like, rescued a cat that lives in my cat's ch uh, shop. And, like, um, we care for it. We, like, even use it. And we give it food and water and shelter. And we, like, um, like give it love and attention. So I, I've tried, like, having a pet before. So I'm not against like adopting or anything but like still why are people preferring to uh, buy from breeders and not like adopt from shelters you know that's a good question you know i wish i knew the answer to that i think if we had the answer to that then maybe we could come up with a, a good solution for that but as it stands currently i think that commodifying animals or viewing animals as commodities is probably part of the problem and the other part is that people just aren't considering the rights violations that occur by virtue of them purchasing from a breeder. I think a lot of people, they're only thinking about what they're going to get out of the experience and what they enjoy. And so it's a little bit self-centered in that way. It doesn't consider the victims. And animal agriculture is the exact same way, right? Like we're focusing on the pleasure that we experience. We're focusing on, you know, the, the, um, the convenience and the tradition that we have while we're ignoring the actual victim that is ending up being tortured and murdered. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, I'm like, uh, like, just like lions, there are, uh, there are uh, omnivores. They are uh, part of the f uh, food chain. And just like I said before, animals don't have like, that much of conscious. So when uh, lions become like a uh, gamble and like, um, just uh, say if uh, they want dominance against another lion, so they end up eating its, uh, its own children. What do you think about that? Yeah, I think that's totally unethical, right? Like, lions do all sorts of things that are unethical. They will sexually assault each other. They will, as you mentioned, they'll murder, like, the children of their mating competition. 
Um, they've been known to just flat out murder each other. I mean, it's very horrific, the types of things that you'll see animals do. And so I don't think that it's a good idea for us to base our morality on the actions of wild animals. You know, a lot of people will say, oh, well, the lion eats animals, so why can't I? It's like, well, the lion also does all of these other absolutely horrific things that we would never consider ethical. So why should we take one thing that the lion does, ignore everything else that's in their behavior and say, this thing is ethical? Like, that doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't seem to be consistent. But, but tell me, how is it ethical if it doesn't say, like, the lion won't know if it's what it's doing is bad or good. It wants its dominance, so it won't know if what it, uh, what it did is ethical or not. It does not have a brain or a conscious to let it know if what it, uh, if it's uh, the thing that it's doing is uh, ethical or not. Uh, lions, it doesn't have a conscious for that. Lions definitely have no, brains. Do you, do you think lions don't have brains? They, all animals have brains, but they don't have a conscious, they don't have the thinking, to, like a thinking part of them to tell them if it, what you're doing is ethical or not. The only one is comments. Well, we, we can't really tell, right? Like, they might have some sort of ethical system, but they might just not be adhering to it, or perhaps their ethical system values things like uh, torturing and murdering, right? Like, there's nothing that says we couldn't build an ethical system like that. The problem is, is, like, we can't actually tell whether or not animals are moral agents. They might be moral patients, but they might actually be completely oblivious to uh, moral considerations as well. Without being able to access the mind of an animal, it's really anyone's guess, right? Yeah. Uh, on, the top, on the topic of veganism, yep. um, like eating meat is not a problem. Just like I said, it's not a big problem. It's because if we don't eat, like this cow, I have a cow right in front of me, and I decided not to eat it, and then I like they found a mate, and then it, they had children, and the children had children, and the, the other children had children, and they keep on breeding, 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 and then I have like. Like 20 or 25 cows just standing in front of me now. And if I leave them for a big, like a while, like, like for another time, I will have like 100 cows just standing in front of me. So if we do not eat them, they will just end up growing and growing and growing and growing and just filling up for the place for no, play or for no reason. Well, that's. Well, that's actually not the case, and I can explain to you why, right? Like, so are you aware of how animals are generally produced in animal agriculture? They, uh, they bring two cows, make them breed, and then they have children, and their, their children grow up and breed, and they go on and uh, start growing. Unfortunately, unfortunately, although that is common on very small farms, the majority of all farms that supply meat uh, do not use this process. Uh, in fact, what they use is a process known as artificial insemination. Have you ever heard of that? No. So an artificial... Making a cow pregnant artificially? Uh, essentially, yes. What they'll do is, for example, they will... Um, as they will uh, acquire the semen from a, uh, a bull cow, right? And then they will store the semen, and then they will take it, and uh, they will attach it to the end of a metal rod. And then they'll chain the female cow up so that she can't move around. And then they will stick their hand into the cow's anus up to their elbow so they can hold the cervix in place. And then they're going to penetrate the cow with a metal rod and uh, in the vagina and they're going to uh, hold the cervix in place while they use the, the metal rod to place the sperm where they want it in order to impregnate the cow. And look, if we were to take this, a human and put them in the place of the cow, I think anybody would call this sexual assault. I think it's very clear that it's, yeah, it's a sexual violation. Assault. Yes, and yeah, that's against the uh, unfortunately it's not against the laws. It's actually standard practice. It's actually not easier. It, it might be more ethical, but it's it's by far not easier because in, in order for them to like wait around for them to just mate with each other, they just have to hope that they feel in the mood and get it on. Whereas with artificial insemination, 
they can impregnate approximately, I think it was like 30 to 50 cows for every one sample of bull sperm that they get. And they can do it as soon as they're ready, whenever they want. And so because of that, it's able to make production that much faster. And because production being fast is such a, such an, uh, a vital consideration in, in terms of meeting the demands for animal agriculture, then this is the way that you'll find the majority of farms are generating their meat, right? And so it's, it's something that we have to consider is like, if we're not willing to support that sort of thing, then we need to not buy our meats from stores and restaurants that are coming from factory farms. Have you by chance ever seen the footage from factory farms? No, it's, um, it's not that, um, I don't, like, I, um, it's like not my parents not wanting me to see it, but it's not, it's, it's because I do not want to see what's happening in those farms because I, once I've seen it on TV and just like insanely broke my heart and to the, like the animals and what the people are doing to them. Like here in Egypt, we breed animals naturally. We leave them do whatever they do. We can wait. We have all the patience for them to get in the wound and get it off. So we can not use that type of like um, artificial um, we use it like uh, we breed animals naturally here. Why doesn't all like countries agree with what we're doing? It's because here we're doing it ethically. Why doesn't yeah, everyone want to agree with that? Is right. it because we're Muslims and, or, or like we do not have the right to like do a people like um, to uh, like think about what we do? Is it like we do not deserve to have a place in the community? It's simply by virtue of the fact that there is such a high demand for cheap animal, uh, cheap animal products that this it requires companies in order to meet that demand to, uh, to go through practices which are going to be more efficient and irregardless of whether it's more ethical, right? So they're placing the, the monetary value over the ethical considerations. Now, I can't speak for your country because I've never done any research into Egypt, right? So I, like, I can't say whether or not your claims are true or false. I guess I can give you the benefit of the doubt for this, right? But either way, yeah. either way, I think we need to consider the victims because when we're stabbing them in the neck, whether or not they were bred in a, a more or less ethical manner, you know, they're going through uh, an absolutely brutal experience that is uh, something we would never wish on anybody that we care about. And I think if we if we genuinely care about the experience of animals, then that's something we're going to have to grapple with is like, do we allow somebody that we care about to be stabbed in the neck just because it's pleasurable or because it's traditional or because or because yeah. like we don't find it wrong on our own moral system, right? Yeah. Okay, so, like, let's agree that we, I have a cow right now, and we agreed that we do not want to eat it. We want it to have its own life and live its life. We have done, like, a, like a short-term thing. It's because we let it go and live its life. What if it gets killed by a disease or hit by a car? We All we did was just give it, like, like a short-time thing. It's not in the long term. It's a short term thing. Like, we, if you not eat this, uh, eat this cow and let it live, it might die from a disease or get killed by somebody else or die by a car accident or a car hit it. What? Like, how do you explain that? Yeah, well, have you ever heard of animal sanctuaries before by chance? I've heard about, uh, like, heard uh, about them, but they're not, like, like, um, I don't know how to say this, but we do not have that much of, like, cow sanctuary sanctuaries here. Yeah, there might not be very many, but, like, if the demand for sanctuaries was higher, then presumably the uh, the supply would at least rise to meet it, right? But the thing about animal sanctuaries is it, it gets around this idea and solves it, right? So instead of the cows being left off to their own devices where we know they might be harmed. Instead, we take care of them on, like, a farm or something like that, except instead of a farm where they're going to get stabbed in the neck in a sanctuary, they're just going to be taken care of. And if they are sick, we're going to take them to the vet. And if they've got any problems, we're going to help them out. And we're just going to take care of them as best we can, right? 
Same way we would for like a dog or a cat. Yeah, so, um, I think that the Thank you. I appreciate the good conversation. You're Just so everyone knows, we do prioritize people who have been verified as not vegan. Hi there. Welcome to the stage. I just, uh, I only have one point uh, that I want to ask you about. Sure, go for so, it. I'm not a vegan, and obviously I don't think being a vegan is good if you want to be a bodybuilder or something like that. And also, like the guy before me, I am a Muslim as well. But just one thing that he did not mention is that uh, in the religion, we're forbidden from eating certain animals. And at the same time, we're also forbidden from eating animals that aren't killed in a, spirit, a certain way. It has the animal first off has to be killed by another Muslim, and there's a very specific way to do it with animals who feel no pain. I just wanted to clarify that. So, what is that specific way where they feel no pain? Can you describe that to me? Uh, I don't really know it. It's mainly for people who like want to follow this line of work. Wait. Or is it something around the neck where it's supposed to go in cleanly without the animal feeling it in any way? Well, yeah. So how do you know that the animal doesn't feel any pain if you don't know how what the process is, if you're not familiar with no, the I process? I watched it. Oh, you did I watch it. Like, yeah, because I don't know, like, the proper... The life has to be sharpened extremely well so that it goes in cleanly without stopping at all. Okay. The animal has to be, uh, uh, they don't kill children animals, obviously, because uh, of other reasons. And, uh, basically, one of the holidays we have is called the uh, Eid. Uh, I'm not going to go into too much religious stuff because uh, it doesn't really relate to the conversation of veganism. Uh, yeah, sure. So, uh, you kill a sheep. That's just part of the uh, tradition. Uh, you're supposed to shorten the life, as I said. And then you're supposed to pierce it through the neck at a very certain area, I think, so that it would uh, die instantly. The way I saw it is that the animal doesn't swear, it doesn't make any sounds, nothing at all. And they say that it's a completely painless procedure. Whereas in other, like, for example, somewhere in America, where if it's not prepared by Muslim, obviously the animal is in pain. They do it in a very painful manner. Yeah, my understanding is that this is not the case, actually. Like, it, typically in animal agriculture, animals will be, um, th 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 will be stunned prior to their neck being sliced open, which essentially makes it so they're not conscious, that they're uh, knocked unconscious for the time that their neck is being sliced. Because obviously, if you're awake while your neck is being sliced open, that's going to be extremely traumatic. It's, uh, it's obviously going to be extremely painful. And so... That's the reason they have that, is actually just from an ethical standpoint. And so methods of um, stunning usually involve either an electric stunning, where they will shock electricity into their brain, or they will use a bolt gun, where they fire a metal rod into the skull of the animal, right? And so and these are meant to render the animal unconscious before their neck gets sliced. However, uh, in religious... Um, killings, they actually give you an exception where you don't have to stun the animal first because it's actually uh, not allowed in religious killings, uh, such as halal slaughter, right? And so instead the animal is fully conscious and they're fully awake while their neck is being sliced. And, you know, some people claim that that's painless, but, you know, I, th I think we have good evidence that it's not. 
I guess I'm just not. Sure, sure. And the bolt gun doesn't always work too if it's improperly applied, yeah. right? Like these methods aren't perfect, but they are better than leaving the animal fully conscious while they get uh, stabbed in the neck, right? <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah, so let's say I had a really sharp knife, and I was, like, to go up to, like, you, let's say, and then, like, slice your neck really fast, though. I just did it really quick. Like, do you think you would feel any pain? Really? Yeah, I'm not sure about that. I've never heard um, whether or not that's true. Um, I'd need to see some evidence in order to be convinced. <laughs> Sorry, you cut out there? You were saying something? How would someone who wants to become a bodybuilder go on a plant-based diet? Yeah, well, there's lots of vegan bodybuilders, right? Like, a plant-based diet is healthy for all ages and all lifestyles, including professional athletes. And we have a, a lot of data behind this, right? Like, I can link you to um, the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. They're the largest dietetics association in the world. And they, along with all of the other major dietetics associations, have unanimously agreed that, according to the best available evidence, uh, a plant-based diet is healthy for um, all stages of life and all life cycle and all lifestyles, including, uh, as I said, professional athleticism. And so I can send you different strongmen, but, like, essentially all you have to do is make sure you're eating a balanced diet. And if you want to look at the data that they made those claims off of, um, they have a links to uh, references, excuse me, to almost 120 different citations that all back up the claims that were being made. And so I can link you that if you're interested. So what exactly, like what kind of fruits or vegetables would make a human, that would give a human more protein than a, like a piece of steak would? Yeah, so a great way to get protein on a plant-based diet are things like legumes. So those are like beans and lentils. And then you can also get a lot from nuts and seeds as well. And protein powder is an excellent source of protein. You can get like plant-based protein powder as well. It's really not too difficult to get high sources of protein on a plant-based diet. I think legumes are personally my favorite source, like tofu and, uh, you know, beans and rice and stuff like that. Uh, those are all give you excellent sources of protein. What's it called? Uh, legumes. Uh, how's it spelled? L-E-G. U M E S. U M E S. Uh huh. That's correct. It should spell legumes. Because I'm not sure if that grows in every country, does it? Yeah, those are just things like beans and lentils, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure you guys have beans, right? Yeah, beans are an excellent source of protein, and uh, other other legumes are like lentils. Lentils are a great source of protein as well. I believe they have a complete protein, if I'm not mistaken. What, the, the vegan bodybuilders I'm talking about? Yeah. No, I mean, they've, they've crushed competitions, absolutely. They've won, they, I, I, know, I can send you vegan bodybuilders who have broke world records and stuff like that. Genetics and uh, like the amount of work he puts in is completely different uh, in terms of the diet. 
obviously the ones that eat snakes and stuff like that are not the ones who are talking about vegans. I don't know the same level as them. Yeah. Two people who are exactly identical. One with a vegan diet and one with a diet, for example. So someone who has like the diet similar to the rocks. Someone who has a lot of protein in their diet, a lot of steak, a lot of rice, all that stuff, chicken. And they have the exact same workout routine. The one who eats the steak will obviously come out stronger. That's bigger. Yeah, I'm definitely not convinced of that claim. Do you have any evidence of that? I mean, no, really, so I'm just asking a question. Oh, yeah, I'm definitely not convinced of that. Um, the data that I've seen seems to show that um, gains on a plant-based diet are just as good. Um, the protein sources give you gains just as well as on a non-plant-based diet. Uh, I haven't noticed either one is better uh, from the best of the research that I've seen. But I'm always open to being convinced. If someone has research that says otherwise, then please present it. You can guys, you can send it in voice, right? And I'm open to changing my mind. But like uh, to this point, I've never seen any evidence that says that now. Alright, that's really fun. Yeah. Alrighty, thank you. I appreciate this conversation. Thank you. Bye. Uh, you take care. You too. Hey, Sophia, how are you doing? Hello. <laughs> So I just wanted to say uh, two things about what uh, the two people that just talked about. Uh -huh. So the guy that said uh, 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 like how you could eat die that uh, uh, you know, injury to the brain stem. Gotcha. If you want, I can explain why sure. it's the brain stem. You? Yeah, go ahead. So the brainstem is a, is a nerve-rich segment connecting the brain to the spinal cord. It controls every bit and the beat of the heart. So, uh, you know, if it gets stretched, crushed, or snapped, this can be instantaneous. Interesting. Okay, well thank you for sharing. That said that uh, uh, about the cows and uh, artificial breeding. I mean, in Egypt, they do artificial breeding. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. I just haven't done any research, so I couldn't weigh in. But I appreciate you letting us know. And I just wanted to say, uh, there is an area where I live, which is very cool, and they uh, 3D print only. Oh wow, that's really cool. Um, yeah. Nice. Is it? Have you tried it? Is it any good? I have not tried it, but I do have a family member that tried it, and they said it's a, it tastes around the same as regular meat. Nice. That's what's up. Yeah. Well, goodbye. All right. I'll see you. Thank you. Yo, what's up, Adisa? How are you doing? Doing good, thanks. Nice, good to hear. So, do you have anything to say about the topic of the stage or anything? So, actually, um, I'm not vegan. I'm sorry, I'm not. But, what is your, like, why did you become vegan? That's what I really want to know. Yeah, sure. Well, that's easy. I mean, I've personally always believed my whole life that, uh, Innocent victims don't deserve to go through uh, absolutely horrible experiences. I don't. I believe that innocent victims don't uh, deserve to be tortured. I believe innocent victims don't deserve to be murdered. I've always believed this my whole life, but I just never really thought about animal agriculture. I genuinely have never considered it. And so eventually I was just browsing on Netflix one night. I was bored and I was looking for something to watch. And I thought I would watch this uh, This. Uh, documentary called Earthlings, and I thought it was going to be like a nature documentary or something like that, right? Because it was called Earthlings. I was like, oh yeah, that's cool. I like nature documentaries. So I turned it on, not knowing what I was getting myself into, 
And it turns out it was a video about animal agriculture and animal rights and about how animals get abused in animal agriculture. And so I watched it and I learned um, about the truth of the animal agriculture industry. And that's when I realized that um, because of my own actions, innocent victims were being tortured and they were being murdered. Um, and they were going through absolutely horrific experiences by virtue of the choices I was making. And so it was at that moment that I decided that I was going to start boycotting animal agriculture and I was not going to support that cruelty ever again. And so uh, it was then that I decided to go vegan and I've been vegan ever since. It's been over five years now and uh, I do consider it the best decision that I ever made. Okay, so what do you recommend people with like an eating disorder, like people like who physically cannot eat like the vegetables, but they have to have paying amounts of protein, which like significantly comes in meat. Yeah, so there's lots of other uh, protein sources besides just meat, right? Like, have you ever heard of seitan by chance? Or it might be called seitan? Uh, no. So that seitan is like a, or seitan, I'm not sure how it's pronounced. It's a, uh, a vital wheat gluten, which is uh, wheat protein, and it's really high in protein. It's actually way higher than you're going to find in like steak and other foods like that, other animal foods like chicken. And so seitan is an excellent source of protein. Uh, beans are also another great source of protein and other legumes like lentils. You might have heard me talking about this before. Uh, nuts and seeds are also another great place to get protein. You can get like protein from hemp seeds, which are a complete source of protein. Uh, chia seeds as well are a complete source of protein. And other nuts and seeds as well are going to give you uh, rich amounts of protein. And so these are all great ways to get protein on a plant-based diet. Uh, it's, it's actually really easy to get enough protein. Um, the, the things you're going to have to worry about really will be things like B12, right? Like you're going to need to get that from a supplement if you're eating a plant-based diet because normally you would get B12 vitamins from meat. But yeah, but finding protein, it shouldn't be very hard. You're just going to have to swap out meat for things like beans and things like, you, you know, mix some beans with rice. That'll be a complete protein or you can have leg, uh, legumes like lentils. I don't know if you've ever heard of lentils. Those are an excellent source of protein. They taste really good and you can cook a bowl of those up, stuff like that. Okay, so like what happens if they're like the people are like poor, they're homeless, living out in the streets, and the, the only thing someone gives them like a Big Mac from McDonald's or something? Do you think they should take that because they're if not, they're probably going to starve on the streets? Do you think they should take that? Yeah, probably. I mean, it depends on what your ethical system is, right? Like some people would consider it unethical to eat even if uh you know even if they were going to starve, but I think a lot of people would consider that ethical. And I think that, you know, if you have no other choice but to eat animal products, that's one thing. But for the most of us, we do have a choice, and we don't have to force animals to go through this horrible experience. And so I think we need to consider that and, uh, you know, consider whether or not we are willing to support um, such blatant cruelty uh, in the animal agriculture industry. I don't know if you've ever seen the videos from animal agriculture, right? Like the, the movie Earthlings or the movie, uh, the documentary um, Dominion. Have you, have you seen either of those? Huh? Have you seen either of those, like the Earthlings documentary or the Dominion documentary? No, I'm sorry. Oh, no worries. Here, I'll, I'll shoot you a link to the Dominion documentary over in voice. I'll ping you. And then uh, if you're willing to check that out, it's extremely informative on animal agriculture. I highly recommend it. then so why do you consider defending the rights of innocent victims to be a toxic action right like if we replaced all of the animals with humans instead would you still say it's toxic to defend their rights no not at all okay I mean, i'm not saying it's toxic to like affect people's rights but i, I don't think like, whenever people are like if you're if you're not vegan you are a horrible piece of scum on the ocean you're right next to it 
I've never actually heard anyone say that. Have you? Yes, actually. The our holy god that we feature. Mm. Well, I think she's purposefully over the top, though. You know that she actually is over dramatic on purpose in order to draw attention to herself? Like, you're aware of that, right? <laughs> yeah. Right, right. So you shouldn't take anything she says too, super seriously. Although, when she's talking about animal rights, she makes very good points, right? Like, she has a, she has a point. Animals are tortured, animals are murdered. And if that's something that we think we shouldn't support, then the only option would be to go vegan, right? Because otherwise you are paying for it to occur. I mean, do you think innocent victims like animals deserve to be tortured and murdered? No, but what happened? Like, the animal is already dead. It's already been put through it. That one, like a bunch of people, like not eating meat, the prices would go down, and more people would start to eat meat. That's the result of it. Well, no, because when the demand goes down, what happens is they don't supply as much meat because there's not going to be as many people buying the meat and eating it, right? Like, people can only eat so much, and they're generally only going to buy a certain amount of food every week, regardless of what the prices are. And even if they do buy more, they're generally not going to eat it faster because they're going to eat food typically at the pace they do, unless, for example, we're talking about, like, a bodybuilder who's maybe uh, gaining weight on purpose, right? But, like, for most people, they're not gaining weight. They're simply maintaining where they're at. And so they're not going to be eating any extra, right? And so what happens when you divest from these systems is it's going to cause the demand to go down, which then causes the farmers to go, oh, look, not as many people are buying cows. Not as many people are buying chickens. All right, this time I'm not going to breed so many. I'm going to breed this many less because the demand is less high. And so in doing so, you are actually preventing animals from being uh, going through these horrific experiences, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, like, what is that really something that you are so far averse to? Do you think that, um, for example, like, being a part of a community is more important, or not being a part of any certain community is more important than maybe avoiding causing, like, torture and murder? I really don't know. I was going to say this real quick. Loki has some really good points, and yes, it is Krimma, just like, you know, and actually, yes, animals are good. They taste good. They're good. But whenever they're put through factory farming, I don't agree with that. Like he says, like, like he's Egyptian, so there they like put animals to peace and love, and peace and love on the planet Earth, and they get along with them, but whenever they're suffering, they put them down, so... Yeah, well, I'm sure they, I'm still, I'm sure that they still kill the animals in order to access their meat, right? And so it's not all peace and love. Like, I don't see how it's peaceful or loving to stab somebody in the neck so that you can enjoy their corpse, right? <laughs> what happens, like, if they're, like, dying and suffering? Like, and they, like, want to die at that point. Yeah, yeah. You mean, like, a mercy so killing? Suffering. Like, a mercy killing? Yes. Yeah, a lot of people would consider mercy killings to be justified, right? Yes. Sure, but, like, that's not what happens in animal agriculture. In animal agriculture, we kill the animals because we want to access their meat, right? It's not because they're they're going through a horrible experience and we just need to put them out of their misery because there's no other option for them. We can't heal them. We can't help them. Instead, we're just selfishly taking their life from them so that we can enjoy the benefits of exploiting them in such a brutal and violent way. So, yeah. What is your favorite vegan meal? My favorite vegan meal is probably the Impossible Burger. I love that. I eat that all the time. Like the Impossible Burger, just like from the grocery store, like from like Burger King. Yeah, I don't really shop out at uh, Burger King. I'll just get the one from the grocery store. I'll put a little seasoning salt on it and then cook it up with some spicy cheese, some spicy vegan cheese. That stuff is so dank. Oh, it's, it's good. I eat it almost every day. I love it. Well, actually, like, when I can, I actually want to try vegan cheese to see all the hype is actually good. Yeah, I mean, like, just like regular cheese, like, some brands are good, some brands are bad, but there's definitely some really fire ones out there, like Applewood Smoked Cheese, if you've ever tried that one, super delicious. Yeah, like, you know, do you know the YouTuber, the one odd ones out, like, he posts seven 
make you eat that challenge, it helps. I would recommend doing that because it, you can, like, get a taste of what the vegan lifestyle is about. And, like, you can see if it's for you or not. Yeah, absolutely. And if anyone is interested in doing a vegan challenge, we actually have a link to a vegan challenge 22, which is a really excellent resource. You can sign up for free and they will give you access to dietitians, meal plans, recipes, uh, a team group to help you out, anything you might need to try going plant based for 22 days. And like I said, it's all free. All you have to do is sign up on their website. I'll send a link in the chat if anyone is interested. And uh, it's a great way to try out a vegan diet, and they'll be able to give you, they'll, they'll basically hold your hand throughout the whole process, so it's, just, it's a really cool resource. Most people that use it tend to enjoy it a lot, so I always highly recommend it. Have you ever been on, like, TikTok and you see those, like, carnivores? What do you think about them? They, like, only eat meat. Here's, it's like liver king, like that other girl who literally made a meat soup. All they can eat is meat. And cheese and some bread, and that's it. Yeah, I would. It's so, it's so disgusting. Yeah, not only is it disgusting, but I would just consider that diet to be, you know, grossly unethical, right? Like it completely ignores the victims, and in, in, in lieu of just <clears throat> going for the uh, the uh, person's selfish desires, right? So, like, I think there's not a lot of good data behind carnivore diets. I don't think that they we have good evidence to show that they are healthy, and I think that. Whether they were healthy or not, it really doesn't matter because what matters most is the victims and whether or not they are being considered when uh, their harm is occurring. Because uh, it's, it's just such a trivial point uh, whether or not something is healthy if we're talking about the, the, the whether or not we're torturing and murdering innocent victims, right? Like, it, it outweighs okay, the health question, so much. I'm questionable. Yeah, let's go for it. Okay, so Sylphid has their hand raised. Can you, like, bring them here at the same time I'm here? No, I want to comment on what they said. we're actually not allowed to do that. Um, we're not allowed to have two people up at once, but uh, if you're done, then I can send you down and bring them back up, though. Um, yeah, I think I've been up here long enough. Thank you for your time. Yeah, likewise. I appreciate it. And uh, you take care. I hope you have a good one. I will. Bye. <laughs> All right, I'll see ya. They, what I want to do is kind of useless because what I want to do is speak to Aki or to hear what else they have to say because they have to say some stuff and I want to be able to talk to them. True. But now they just say that they can't have two people. Well, you know, it, the, it looks like no one else is really wanting up anyways, so I'm thinking we're probably going to shut down this stage and then we'll just move it to voice. And then if you want guys want to talk over voice, we can do that. All right, cool. Well, um, I'm probably going to end up shutting down the stage then because uh, it looks like we're all petered out. There's no more uh, people raising their hands. But, yeah, if everybody wants to move to, like, DC3, um, we can just do that. And then... Uh, uh, I'm thinking either VC3 or if you guys want to hop in, there might be conversations already happening in DC2, so it's kind of up to you. If you want to start new conversations, I suggest VC3. If you want to maybe hop in on some other conversations, that's VC2. Sound good? Yeah. All right, cool. Well, I will see you guys all in, well, looks like we got one more person with their hand up, so I'll go ahead and take care of that, and then after that, we're going to move to either VC2 or VC3. All right, I'll see you. Thanks. Hey, welcome to the stage, Finn. How you doing? Hello? You there? Finn? Yeah, I can't hear you. Uh, maybe try turning your volume up a little bit or something? Hello? Hello? Hi, how you doing? Good, how are you? 
I'm pretty good, thanks. Uh, yeah, I'm actually not a mod, sorry, I won't be able to help you out with that. I think the best way to reach a mod would be to use the mod mail. So if you go up to the um, top right, there should be a mod mail that you can send a message to, and that should give you access to the mods. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, as because I'm not a mod, uh, I can't really do anything about that, right? Like, uh, if you do run across another mod, you could talk to them. But other than using mod mail, I'm not sure of any other way to access the mods other than talking to one directly if they happen to be around. So, yeah, sorry about that. I wish I could help you out more. Yeah, no problem. All right, you take care. Alright everybody, we're going to go ahead and move this over to VC2 or VC3. I'm going to shut down the stage. So thank you for your time and uh, I hope you all have a great day. I actually have no idea how to end the stage. <laughs>